Hi gang. I've got a Harmony on the bench today. This is a 1960s Harmony. It's the all mahogany, no binding, straightforward, OM size model. And we're going to do some fun things to it, hopefully. So what do we want to do to this guitar? Well, the owner's a professional musician here in town, and he'd like me to take off this original bridge and swap it out for a pin style bridge. Now these old harmonies, um, the bridges on them function basically like a classical guitar. The ball ends run on the back edge of the bridge here, they go through it and up and over the saddle. They're not connected to the inner workings of the guitar, they don't have uh, any connection to the underside of the soundboard itself, just flat on top. And uh, this is very much a factory expediency because they were really cranking these things out in the 60s. Um, the harmony factory was a really going concern. Um, part of the reason why they had to bolt these in place is because it's sort of a tenuous connection. There's um, just the mechanics of it really want to tear this bridge off. Um, now these are ladder brace guitars, which is nice, and Harmony thought ahead because they made a nice wide flat brace that runs right underneath the bridge, and I can put a, an overlay of maple on top of there to make basically a big bridge pad. And when we drill for our pegs, um, it'll function just like a, a regular uh, steel string guitar bridge, like a Gibson. Um, I've done this on a number of different harmonies, quite a, actually two of them in very recent times, and um, the net effect is we get a little more volume and it seems to wake the guitar up. You just get more sound, they become livelier instruments. And uh, the owner, you know, he wants to do this and I say okay, so let's go ahead. This guitar has had some experiences in its life. It's had a kung fu neck reset done on it here where the neck was cut away from the body and turned into a bolt on. There's a great big sort of hex head bolt running through the uh, strap button there. There's actually quite a lot of glue around that too. I think we'll maybe we'll chip some of that off for him while we're at it. Um, big washer inside um, holding things in, in place. Um, the other thing is, it's actually, there's a bit of a, a roller coaster happening along the top here. You can see that the fingerboard extension has pushed down as the guitar tried to fold in on itself. Because this is ladder braced guitar and there's no um, sort of longitudinal support in this area, it's formed a bit of a wave. And um, you know, that's not too distressing. I mean, it's, it's deformed, it's not cracked, things seem relatively solid. But maybe we can, while we've got the strings off and the bridge off, maybe we can press a little bit of that out. Again, it's not a, a huge necessity. I don't think it's really in that much danger. Um, it'd be more for aesthetics than anything else. But uh, just something we can think about while we're at it. So that's the original nut there, right from the factory. String spacing looks okay. I mean, these guys were cutting these nuts so fast that sometimes they were playing a little fast and loose with the, uh, the dimensions here, and you'll have some really wonky uh, string to string spacing. This one's all right. It's not too bad. Um, just playing the strings here. I noticed that on the low E, I'm getting a bit of a lisp, and that usually means when you're playing a string that's open and you hear that little bit of a buzz, that the nut slot is a little too low. Just pressing down on the third fret here, I can feel that that string is resting right on top of the first fret. It means there's no clearance. Uh, the other strings seem fine. There's uh, yeah, they're all clear. Um, uh, so maybe we'll raise up that slot a bit while we're at it. That first string seems kind of muted to me. I think we can see here why. Uh, the angle for the string running over the saddle is very, very low. It's probably only four or five degrees. Not much break angle there at all. What happens is the string will actually start functioning like a sitar. It'll start vibrating on top of the saddle. or um, It'll also just sort of sound kind of muted, kind of cottony, soft, and just not very focused. So we'll obviously improve that too when we make the new bridge and we'll have better brake angle for our saddle. Just thought I'd take a second to say thank you to all you subscribers out there. Had a major influx of a uh, whole bunch of new people in the last little while based on a couple of videos. And um, it's always kind of interesting to know that people find this stuff fun to watch, you know, this thing that I do every day. But I do appreciate all your comments, um, even your constructive criticisms. Some of you guys make me laugh. Um, but mostly I'm just sort of tickled that you actually like to watch this. I get a whole lot of questions. If you have a question, you know, I can try to answer it. But to be honest, I'm getting like a hundred of them a day. And this is a day job, so like there's not always time to answer every question. Um, if you have suggestions for things that you actually want to see me cover, you could always maybe leave those in the comments and I'll try to keep an eye out for a job to film. 
try to do maybe one of these a week, you know. So if you haven't subscribed before, maybe hit the subscribe button. And uh, mostly just thanks so much for showing up and watching me do this. So before I took the bridge off, I took a couple of measurements that will be helpful later on. I checked to see how high the strings were above the surface of the soundboard itself, and then also how high the bridge is. And in this case, it's about 3 eighths of an inch or 9.5 millimeters, which is pretty standard, and it's a good tall bridge. Um, we have enough saddle exposed, not a whole lot. Um, what we're going to do is actually make the new bridge about 5 sixteenths of an inch, which is a safe figure. Um, anything less than that, if you get down to about a quarter of an inch, you'll find that there just isn't enough rotational force on the bridge, and you end up with a guitar that's not very loud, loses focus, doesn't sound all that great. 5 sixteenths is a safe um, bridge height. Uh, it works well. Martin has made some bridges in the past at that height, and so has Gibson, so I feel safe using that figure. Um, what I'm shooting for is maybe just a little bit more saddle exposure, especially on the treble side. Um, but we, we want to reduce the action, obviously, by about a 64th or, two six, or about a 32nd of an inch on the treble side. So we're going to make it slightly lower, slightly tapered. Now to get this old, uh, old bridge off here, we have to remove the screws first of all. Usually these are held on with a couple of square nuts. And depending on how it's been stored, these can be really kind of rusty and tight. And yeah. Yeah, I'm holding on to the nut, and it's actually, I'm going to have to use a pair of pliers or something in there to grab hold of that nut, because it's not going to want to come off. Let's see how this one does. Mm. Yeah, no, this one's better. This one's coming out. Got my hand all jammed up against a brace, and I'm holding on to a pair of vice grips. This is why guitar repair guys' hands are always such a mess. using a violin maker's purfling pick here to get under the saddle. Well, that came out no problem. All right, what have we got here? Yeah, under saddle pickup. Okay, there's lots of slack there. And a piece of shim. And I think we're going to have to unsolder this at the end pin here to get that to come out. I don't think I could force that back in through the hole. This guitar is an exterior mount jack with screws. Kind of careful when you pull it out. Yeah, it's pretty dirty. Probably use a cleaning. So we'll unsolder that and we'll take that pickup out. Something interesting here too. I don't know whether this was a repaired crack, but there's a line of either finish or glue. It's proud of the surface runs up to the sound hole. And another one, it kind of just basically meanders its way on down to the lower bout, like a big dribble. Don't know what that's about. Now I've always used a regular clothes iron to do this. Um, been doing this for about 20 years now using a, a standard clothes iron. Um, there are specialized tools that you can heat up on a hot plate that are about the size of the bridge or small, what they call ceiling irons. Um, well, that are maybe about three or four inches long. It might be better for this. Main thing is it's not on a screaming high heat um, and you have to be careful because the surface finish, you don't want to heat it up too much otherwise it will start to get tacky. Especially shellac. Um, I oftentimes put a piece of paper or something near the bridge just to kind of bounce some heat off it, but if it's a shellac finish you did that, the shellac would actually heat up to the point where it would stick to it and it would peel off with the paper. So just got to be wary. Also you got to be careful of pick guards. I learned that the hard way. Um, recently I, I got, I wasn't even really close to an old celluloid guard. I was maybe three or four inches away and I noticed that the celluloid started to shrink immediately. 
and um, bubbled up in a funny way and then basically turned to dust. So it's kind of a sort of feel as you go. Using the rosewood as a thermal sink, it'll hold the heat. Just make sure the area around isn't getting too hot. The other thing I'm doing is looking at the grain here. I know there's some areas in the lower bout where it's actually separated slightly uh, in here too. That tells me that you know if it was going to lift it would lift like this. So I really want to bring my knife in this direction rather than butt into it and peel it up. So I'm going to start attacking the back edge of the bridge first. The bridge is quite warm. I usually start in the center. I don't know if there's a, a reason for that, but it's just what I do. And I'm using my palette knife, which is, again, it's a thin knife, but it's not really sharp. And sort of get one edge in and kind of work my way along, almost like a sawing motion. Being careful with the finish, that's the main thing. This is very flexible and uh, you know I don't want to do too, too much damage. There's some people who do this um, cold actually, and others who do it with a little bit of water. That works. Don't want to get too much water on an old finish either because it'll cloud up on you. Okay, that's starting to get a little bit tough to maneuver, and I can feel it feels kind of dry up on this side, so I'm going to go ahead and heat that up again. And you just kind of work your way around, sort of spot by spot, heat it up as you go, heat up for about 30 seconds, a minute. Get the knife in, make a little bit more space, and just take your time. One thing that you probably shouldn't do is come in on the edge of the bridge pretty vigorously like this because if you think about it, the grain is running this way. It's more fragile that way and it's just easier to cause damage scratches. So as much as possible keep the flat edge of the knife perpendicular to the grain lines. And just be gentle. Sometimes you have to go back and rework the areas that you previously did because the heat will actually soften the old hide glue and uh, starts to adhere again. In that case what you can do is sort of leave a knife in there to give you a sort of a wedging effect. To deal with the soundboard deformation, I've made a couple of spruce reinforcement strips here. They're about 150 thousandths of an inch thick, it's like three and a half millimeters, and they are cut pretty carefully to fit between the uh, upper and lower transverse braces. I've also cleaned the inside surface of the soundboard there and sanded it slightly because it was pretty rough. So those will fit in there. I'll clamp on the inside using some uh, spruce. It's relatively thick and on the outside using this acrylic call that's good and rigid and by using those in concert we should be able to press out some of that bulge. This should be snug but not too tight, don't want to crush anything. I want to get in there and clean as much glue squeeze out as I can. It's not easy with all these clamps in the way. I'm using this Chechen recently for uh, bridges. It's the right color. Actually, sounds when you drop it, it has that same sound that Brazilian does. It's good and hard. Works well. Nice stuff. I marked a center line on the bridge, and also checked the the old bridge just to see where the saddle slot ends up, and from its at the farthest distance from the front edge of the bridge, it's about 10 millimeters. So I know I'm going to want about a 5 millimeter gap between the base strings and the back of the saddle. And then give myself another um, 
three or four millimeters for the um, the width of the bridge pin hole. So that gives me about 19 millimeters from the front edge of the bridge. And so I mark that, put a line up there, and um, now we can talk about the spacing. On this guitar, it was actually quite comfortable, relatively wide. Some of the harmonies were narrow. This one was pretty comfortable at about 57 millimeters uh, string spacing from the center of the strings on the outside strings. So that's we're going to keep that, and uh, we'll transfer that mark on here, and then we'll divide that up into uh, the individual string holes. I tell you, one of these dial calipers is a great thing to have if you want to be precise. This is a 316 Sprad point drill bit. I've got a fence on here so that uh, I keep the holes in a regular spacing from the front edge. And I'll just move my way along. Um, you want to be pretty precise. That's what the pin pricks are for. It lets me set up the drill bit exactly on center before I turn it on. Just using some tape to mark out where I'm going to have the end of the the facets or the scoops on the bridge and I'll go and use my oscillating spindle sander to shape those. Yes, this is a bit of a dangerous operation but uh, that sanding drum is turning away from the fence so that if my fingers did actually contact it they're not going to get pulled in between the fence and mangled they're going to be pushed away. So still good idea to keep your fingers away from the sanding drum. Common sense using a cabinet scraper to shape the bottom of the bridge, make the arching, and also very lightly relieve the interior portion to a depth of maybe a thousandth of an inch so that it makes contact around the perimeter first when I put the clamps on. Then I'll grab some sandpaper. I mean, this is an operation they didn't spend a whole lot of time on in the 60s at the Harmony factory, so you can be kind of philosophical about how much sanding you want to do. I do want it to be smooth. And I'll also just make the, we'll break the edges around the corners here and make that nicer to touch. I'm going to apply some polymerized tongue oil to the edges and the wings of the bridge at this stage. I'll try not to get it on the top of the bridge at this point because I'm going to eventually put a piece of tape on there when I mark out for the intonation lines and the tape won't stick if it's oily. But what it does is it acts like a resist and when I glue the bridge on it keeps the glue from sticking to the sides and makes cleanup easier. We'll uh, remove the nut here so I can raise it slightly. Just get a block of wood quick little tap. That should be all it takes if it's glued in properly. This already had a shim in the slot, just a very thin piece of veneer. I'm going to make a new shim, but I'm actually going to glue it directly to the bottom surface of the nut, which is my preferred way of doing this. First, a few passes on the sanding block so that we've got a good clean uh, glue joint. Some super glue. I'm using maple in this case. You can also use bone. Bone takes uh, longer to work, obviously. Um, in this case, I can just get it stuck down, and then I can plane or sand off the excess around it. Being careful of the fingers, obviously. Now the nut slots were extremely deep in this case, way deeper than they had to be, so I thought I'd remove the excess material and make the strings sit in there better. So the new bridge gets glued in place using protective calls on both the inside and outside to make sure that I'm not damaging the surfaces. This is the little bridge pad I made and I'm just demonstrating here, obviously it gets glued on the underside, I just hold it in place with some 3 16 bolts. We will drill out the bridge pin holes and ream them to shape. And then I'll also just lightly chamfer the top surface with a chamfering bit. Here I'm marking the string path on the outside strings so I can set the intonation. Just measuring the distance from the front edge of the nut to the center of the 12th fret and I get 318 and a half millimeters. I use millimeters for this rather than inches even though this guitar was obviously designed in inches. Uh, just more convenient. So 318 and a half times 2 is 637 total millimeters. 
which would, that's interesting, it's about a 25 and an eighth scale. It's a funny scale, it doesn't really matter though. So I can take that, that's 637, I'll plug that into my phone in the uh, Stuart McDonald um, fret calculator and that can give me the actual distance including compensation here I can mark that on the bridge and we'll have a place to do our saddle slot. Okay just want to make sure that I've got enough room there I assume I do for the uh, under saddle pickup I want about a millimeters uh, extra width there just to give me a little bit of leeway and yeah it fits nicely and just checking this I'm pretty sure this is going to be an eighth inch yep so we'll make an eighth inch saddle slot. Okay, I got my router sled set up here, really low tech, just a piece of plywood that gets clamped to the top. There's a couple of bolts and a, a padded cork call thing that goes on the back. Um, two, two quarter 20 bolts I can tighten up, protecting the top with some paper. And uh, I can use one or two clamps on the other side as well. Again, just on, over the edge of the lining where the guitar is good and strong, you don't want to be clamping on the loose back um, and pad it. Uh, with some cork so that uh, you're not damaging the finish. Um, this thing, simple, just, just holds my little Bosch Colt router and this tray here moves back and forth. I can lock into any position I want. Simple, easy, works pretty well. It's designed in such a way that the router has support on both sides of the base plate so it's not going to tip. Very solid, secure, and it puts the slot exactly where I want it. So for cutting the saddle slot that's an eighth of an inch, I like these Onsrud spiral down cut bits. They are high speed steel and um, they cut a really clean slot in ebony or uh, rosewood, the harder woods, and they're really good at plunging. So I like them. The only um, drawback to these is as they come from the manufacturer, they're quite long. And in order to make them fit in my um, laminate trimmer and my jig, I actually have to lop off about five eighths of an inch or so with uh, a Dremel tool and a diamond cutoff wheel so that it, it's the right height. In order to set the depth on this, I have shims of varying thicknesses. They just sit in the tray there. I put the router in there and lower the bit so that it contacts the top of the, uh, the bridge. So if this is a four millimeter shim, when it contacts the top of the bridge and I remove it, I can lower the bit into the work and it's going to be four millimeters. marking out for some string ramps and we'll work on those using some files and a Dremel with a burr. And we'll re-solder the jack. It's actually a new jack. And then here I'm establishing the radius on the top of the saddle using a radius sanding block. And we'll cut off most of the excess using a rather dull jeweler's saw. And do some nut work we got the old and the new. Got a bit of a compensated saddle there. We've uh, got a better brake angle on the strings and the action has come down about a 64th of an inch on the bass and the treble so it's playing pretty nicely now. And we also managed to press out some of that hump in the top there. It's much closer to flat now. Feels pretty good. Anyway I will do a little bit of a comparison test here uh, which I filmed earlier and we can hear how it sounds. And, uh, well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching, and I will see you again soon. Okay, so this is for all those guys who complain and never give you a before shot. This is the uh, original bridge in its original configuration as it arrived. I'm just going to play a few chords. New bridge. Also new strings though, so that's going to have an effect. I guess for a more scientifically accurate test I should have saved the old strings and put them on the guitar again. I didn't do that, sorry. to play. Easier to play now too. Thanks for watching.